three, two, one. Today's video is one of the most amazing games that I have ever seen. I only recently came across this game and I think it is criminally underseen. Playing black against Gelfand, Sheriff is actually going to outdo, in my opinion, the famous move of the century that he played last century against Apollov, check the video in the cards, and come up with an amazing way to get the win as black. So, diving into the game, Gelfand opens up with d4. We're going to zip through the opening relatively quickly. It's a very theoretical Grunfeld. I'm not really a Grunfeld specialist, and I don't know how much the players had prepared for this game, which was a rapid game, which is really important to keep in mind. Now, we're going to get black going after the a2 pawn, which is a really sharp line of the Grunfeld, trying to pawn grab and hope that the queen side is useful, which it will be in this game right here. And then Gelfand is going to go after the e7 pawn. Here, Shirov plays b6, choosing to let Gelfand take on e7, but keeping a good solid queen side. Some people have tried queen a3 as a way to defend e7, but Shirov's path seems better, even though the computer, I think misunderstanding the position, likes uh, white's position at first. So after taking on e7, we get rook e8. Obviously, there's a lineup here on the e file, so the bishop doesn't want to move and drop e4. So d6 but then the knight goes after the bishop. Now bishop b5, pinning the knight right here, obviously hoping to keep all of this together, and the knight captures on e7. So this is an exchange sacrifice because at some point, Gelfand is going to capture here on e8 and also on e7. He gets clever here with the move h3, and after a trade here, note that this knight can't move, so we are still going to be able to win the exchange in this position as white. Right, The only safe square the knight can go to is c8, that drops the whole rook on e8, so you have to permit here the capture on e8 and the capture on e7, and we get to this position. So pausing for a moment, I see that Stockfish is telling me that this is plus half a pawn for white. I really don't think that that's an accurate assessment of the position. Probably here, I think that the two connected pass pawns on the queen side with that nice dark squared bishop give full compensation for the exchange. I do think that the game is likely to be a draw with best play, but this is a rapid game. And in a rapid game, I actually think the chances might be with black because it's much more difficult for white to deal with these connected passers on the queen side. You can go wrong here than for white to generate some play uh, that might result in a win for white. In any case, moving along here, we get a defensive e4, bishop d4, rook b to d1, queen e5, rook d3, a5, the pawns are finally starting to move, queen d1, uh, bishop falls back, we get rook e2 here. Note that if b5, then you would get rook d5 here. That's something to keep in mind. You do need to make sure that you're keeping this bishop stable. If you overextend as black, then you could have some problems. We get now rook to e6 and pawn to g3, and this is a little bit of a mistake, actually, at least an inaccuracy from Gelfand. Rook d6 is now a nice move. The exchange of one pair of rooks works in black's favor here, and you can't capture on d6, which is what you'd like to do in this position, the best way to handle it, because queen takes d3 is a really nice intermediate move that white opened up with the move g3. You're still gonna capture here, but you're only gonna capture after cleaning out the white uh, king side over here. So queen takes h3, you can trade the queens and pick up the rook and notice you've got an extra h pawn now, and this should be enough to win the game as black in interesting position still though. So after rook to d6 here, the king steps up to g2. That's going to allow a trade here. And then the black pawns are getting a little further down the board thanks to this exchange and good tactical sequence from Shirov. The pawn makes it uh, down to a3 here. Now queen c4 and king g7. We're going here after this f7 pawn, uh, which makes a lot of sense. Queen f6, pulling back, attacking f2, f4 here thinking to play e5 and really put a lot of pressure here on f7. So queen b2 check, black is forced to play aggressively in response. King f3, queen f2 check, king g4. Now, this is where things get absolutely bonkers and we're gonna have a lot of analysis from this point on, but it's just all going to be truly stunning here. 
Now, Gelfand, or, or Shirov, I'm sorry, is going to play in a really aggressive way in this position. Possibly the best decision, according to the engine, was King H6, which probably wraps up the draw. Maybe uh, Sheriff is pressing, but you got to be careful not to overpress. Now, here, this does allow F7 to fall, but it doesn't allow it to fall with check. If you capture here with the queen, then you actually run into mate here, queen e2 check, queen h5, so that's no good, right? But you can capture here with the rook, which is interesting. But after capturing here with the rook, the pawn is able to march forward, pawn to a2 threatening to promote. Rook a7 is the only way to get behind that pawn, but then you have the move b5, which attacks the queen right here. Let's get that arrow right and attacks the rook as well. Now, this is actually a drawn position here. After queen takes b5, your rook falls, but there's a perpetual here. The king is not going to be able to escape the checks. So this is correct play after the move king h6. However, that's not what happens, and instead, Shirov ups the ante here with pawn to h5 check. Now, you can't move the king to g5 because queen takes g3 is an immediate checkmate here, so the king goes to h4. But again, black has to deal with the problems here on f7, and they're not so easy to deal with. So after king h4, we get pawn to g5 check one of the many brilliant moves, in my opinion, in this game. Again, you can't play king takes here. Uh, all king captures are just walking into mating nets here. The king can try and run, and then you get check, and then the king goes over here, and then queen check, and king d5, and queen e6 is mate, which is really, really beautiful. If king takes h5 instead, then after queen f3 check, you're getting the same mating net here, if king takes, queen takes g3, and we've already seen this march, and if the king goes over here to h5, then you're in uh, luck because the bishop is able to access this f2 square for a different, also beautiful checkmate. So after g5 check, because the king captures aren't working, you must take here with the pawn on g5. Now, in this position, notice that the black queen now defends f7, which is really important. That's because the f-pawn in capturing on g5 did open up the black queen to help defend, which is really nice. The geometry in this finish just fits together perfectly every variation that you're looking at. So the king now comes to g6 in this position. Uh, which gets out of the way of a few things, but it's also creating some massive threats. So in this position, Gelfon has to be really, really careful. The big, big threat, if I can make up a move here, let's just say rook a7 to pull something out of a hat. Queen f4 check. Amazing. After queen f4 check, you have to take, and then you get bishop f2 checkmate. I just love it. It's so beautiful. Again, let's just put that move on the board one more time. Queen f4 check. So that's the threat in the position, and there aren't many ways to defend against it. Now, in this position, one option would be queen to d3, trying to shore up the third rank. So if queen f4 check, you're going to be able to block on g3. But here it seems like black is winning after the move queen e3, which is eyeing this g5 pawn. And after a trade here, the problem is you've got mating nets and you've got a passed a pawn and white can't hold on in this position. Uh, black is going to win uh, this end game. You're lucky that you're holding on to the b pawn. So a better path after king to g6 here is rook to d3 instead, pulling the rook back to hold on to the third rank. And again, the lines are just insane. Here you can play pawn to a2, so you're threatening promotion and you still have these ideas if white messes up the defense somehow. Now white needs to play queen to d5, allowing promotion but getting counterplay with queen to c6 check. Now black can just settle here for a draw with the very subtle king h7 falling back, uh, avoiding some of the dangerous checks in this position. Um, and I also want to point out that uh, if you, after king h7, go queen to c6 here, then bishop d4, and you cut off the rook's access to the back row, which is really, really important. And again, you're threatening promotion. So this is one way that black could win here. But 
after queen to d5 here, correct is a1 queen, you're making a queen, and then queen c6 check, right? So this is threatening to go queen h6 check and rook d8, which is checkmating. So we've seen some cool checkmates from black, but white is also trying to give some checkmates. Here, the amazing and only saving move is bishop to d6. Another two exclamation mark, just utterly brilliant move. The point is, whichever way you capture, you're breaking your coordination here. If you capture with the queen, then pawn to f6 isn't allowing you queen to e8 check. The queen had to move off of c6, and white no longer has a finishing blow here. Alternatively, if you capture with the rook here, the rook is in the way of the queen, so you don't get the queen to h6. Now the king has to fall back here to h7, but after rook h6, check king g7, queen to e8, even though black has two queens on the board and there, and there are three queens in play, uh, this is a position that white is really close to winning, but black is able to save a draw by perpetual by giving up one of the queens in this position, and then you can hold on and keep this king in check. If the king tries to run, the big thing is you're not able to get out this way uh, with the white king because of the geometry. So as the king tries to run, this is an important check. If the king goes here immediately, then you have this g5 pawn falling with check. And if the king goes to f5, then check here and king here. And this is really, really important. Otherwise, the king would be getting away and then white would win the position with the extra rook, so the king is forced back. You're able to keep the checks together and hold a perpetual just by the skin of your teeth. So amazing stuff with multiple brilliant moves from both sides in that variation. Play through it again. Uh, I would really, really encourage that. But that does indicate that after rook to d3, there's a draw in the position. Instead, though, Gelfand played the move queen to c3, which makes a lot of sense. Another way, uh, this is another way to defend the third rank. And also, the queen is staying in touch with uh, a1 and also with these dark squares so that maybe you can play rook d8 and then the rook could get in here. And with the queen coming as well, it could be mate. But now I think this is really dangerous for white. So in this position here, Shirov plays the move pawn to f6. Wonderful. Now, again, we're threatening a checkmate. We're threatening just to take right here. Now, you have two captures on f6, and one of them is correct, and Gelfand plays neither of them. Definitely incorrect is queen takes f6, when after the trade of queens here, then you can just push the a pawn, and then you can go for a mating net here, attacking this g5 square. The a pawn keeps the rook from being able to defend here, and also if you ever play g4, then you open up a new diagonal, the king is not able to escape via g3, and you have a beautiful, beautiful checkmate. However, g takes f6 in this position was sufficient to draw. After g takes f6, queen takes f6 here, the king gets pulled away from uh, the square g6 because it had to capture the queen, whereas in the other line, we were able to let the white pawn survive here on f6. We could ignore the pawn, but by changing the move order around, then the king has to take, which frees the mating net. What's really, really interesting here is that uh, these pawns are still more dangerous than all of the white pawns. White can play king takes h5 here, and Stockfish is saying it's a draw. But just to indicate how narrow that draw is, after the move b5, getting the connected pass pawns going, and they're more dangerous than the three white pawns, they're very scary here, the only move according to Stockfish to draw here is the move rook to c7. I don't know about you, but I can't guarantee that I would immediately play this in the position. And honestly, I'm not even sure that if you analyze this further really carefully that it is a draw. It's just still crazy, crazy sharp. And the key thing is forget the material. The connected pass pawns are definitely the danger in the position. I think there's a good chance that Shirov would win this endgame. And he's an amazing endgame player. Uh, by the way, a lot of people don't appreciate that because he's known for an attacking player, but he's an amazing calculator, and that has allowed him to win many, many fine endgames. So, backing it up, after this move, pawn to f6 
from Shirov here. What we did get from Gelfond is the move Rook to D5 in this position. And this is a losing move, but there's more great stuff coming. So after Rook D5, the correct move is Pawn to A2. Getting near to promotion here, the Pawn is obviously tremendously strong. And even if you don't promote it, it can distract the white pieces, which can allow the checkmates that we're going to see. Now, there is one almost saving resource that I have to point out here that I just love. There's no actual way to save the game for white at this point. White is losing, but there is a resource that comes close. That is rook takes c5. The point of this is to give up the rook. That's the whole point. Rook takes c5. You're getting rid of the rook so that you can play queen to e5. Why would you want to play queen to e5? And this is definitely pointed out by Stockfish, and I was wondering if my computer was malfunctioning for a split second here. You're threatening perpetual check, and if you take, this is stalemate right here on the board. What a stalemate. Imagine if this worked. It does not quite work, but it's still a very clever resource and the best thing that white had because after queen to e5 here, you can take here on g5. Now, after the queen captures, this is still tricky because there are a lot of checks here. It's not easy for the black king to get out of the way. Black should be able to eventually push the dangerous pass pawns, much more dangerous than the white pawns, and win the game. But you are going to have to work hard to get out of these checks. You know, in a rapid or blitz game, this is by no means an easy win. So that was a great possible resource. Rook takes e5 and queen to e5. Seriously, there's just so many, uh, there's just so much here that is fantastic and worthy of your attention. So instead, after a2, Galfon tries rook to f5, which for a split second might look like it's winning because you're piling up here on f6 and you're attacking the black queen, but actually black is winning with two versions of the same idea. What Shirov played was the move queen to f4 check. Boom. This is just ending the game right here. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. If you take with the rook, you get g takes, and that is checkmate. And if, as in the game here, you capture the pawn, then after bishop f2 check, it's almost checkmate. You can block with the queen, but... We're going to be promoting the black queen down here, which is what happened in the game. Note that the B pawn is really important because that pawn is marching up the board very, very quickly. This is exactly what happened in the game, and there were another 10 moves, and then Gelfond resigned, but the position is lost right here, and I'm sure Gelfond knew it. We won't even play out the rest of the moves here. However, I do want to point out that after rook f5, there was an even slightly cleaner way to win. You could have queened immediately so that you distract the white queen. And then after the white queen takes, you have queen to f4 check in this position. Just as beautiful, but just a little bit cleaner. Obviously, the exact same ideas. Whether you take with the rook, it's mate right here. Or if you take with the pawn, it's immediately mate because this time there's no queen g3. Spoiling the beauty of this final position. And I am going to make this the final position. I'm not going to show the end of the game because I just want to leave this position up here on the board. What a finish. If you like this game and want to check out more, you can always click on the playlist over here sitting right on top of the chessboard. And as always, if you want to support the content, then you can like, you can subscribe, and you can hit the bell to be notified of future videos.